really glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> no, 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 of course. So, Mike, um, give us a little introduction about yourself, like in a, a five-minute intro. How would you introduce yourself? That's really short. <laughs> yeah, five minutes first. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I was born and raised in Switzerland. And then I pretty much grew up with a foster family because my mom left at a very early age. I didn't really have the best childhood and pretty much lived by myself since I'm 16. And when I was 18, I decided to uh, look for my mom. So that's actually the reason why I came to the Philippines. It wasn't because of basketball. No way. Yeah, it was to find my mom. That's, that's yeah, amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I pretty much, I, I just, I left everything. I didn't quit my job. I mean, I didn't resign. I didn't uh, quit my apartment and uh, even the military. I literally just packed one bag and I bounced to the Philippines with nothing. I <laughs> barely had any money, but I just felt like really strongly to, that it's the right thing to look for my mom. So yeah. I ended up here 2005. And then, uh, uh, well, a lot of events happened, but I eventually found my mom. She's from the island of Leyte. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. And uh, kind of reconnected with her, but she's mentally ill because of uh, uh, the, the past. Like when she was still in Switzerland, uh, the, da uh, the, the guy she was married with, which I thought was my real dad, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. was super abusive, like to a point where she became mentally ill. And oh, damn. I totally understand that because... It's just like a glass of water. It can only hold so much water and then it just mm. overspills. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. And uh, well, all this time I thought he was my dad. But when that happened, I was maybe like nine or 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't take it anymore being at home. And I literally just run away from home. And then the social services uh, picked me up. And that's how I became a foster kid because they stripped away his guardian rights. And then later on, I found out from the government also that that dude wasn't even my real dad. So I know I'm half Filipino, but I don't know my other half or who my other dad, who my dad is. Oh, wow. And then, yeah. So, so like, in, sorry, Sap. That's, that's super interesting. I had no idea. Like, I thought- a Really you, long story. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, but that's a, that's a cool reason for coming to the Philippines, man. I mean, you, if you were being called to it, it's, I'm sure it wasn't just like a spur of the moment thing. Like it was know. probably going in your head for a bit before you actually did it. Or was it just like... Uh, well, because I, I grew up so different because I never really had parents who told me do this or do that, don't do this, don't do that. Like uh, even when I was young, I was always somebody who went after the things which I feel really strongly about. And I didn't <laughs> care if the whole outside world thinks uh, it's not a good idea because... I believe it's really not an accident why we feel so strongly about something. Like, you know, really a gut feeling. Mm, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I didn't know that then, but now being older, like that's really the biggest brain we have. And I've been living my whole life like this. And I mean, I'm still around and brought me to places. <laughs> nice. Maybe you can share like your, your journey in terms of like moving towards basketball. Like, and a lot of things happen going to that journey. And after, as you mentioned to me, uh, years ago yeah well uh, I ended up being living with a family of a Filipino friend of mine in Switzerland like his uh, Filipino fa Filipino family and it was in BF so they kind of helped me uh, to get on my feet here and they helped me also a lot to find my mom and then they had a, a guy in the house like a yayo mm. and he was asking me if I want to watch a basketball game and I really had no clue about how big basketball was here you know <laughs> it's crazy because in my head growing up in switzerland basketball is just football. NBA. yeah football you know? is the game <laughs> yeah soccer yeah and so we went to green meadows and it was the pba off season so he never played against san miguel and those are the two biggest teams here and when i got there i was shocked because i'm like whoa who are those big Filipinos because in Switzerland I'm like the tallest Filipino <laughs> yeah for sure right? <laughs> you know, like pretty shocked to try to explain to me like it's professional league yeah 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 
And uh -huh. after the game, you know, all those kids go on the court, you know, signature and pictures. So I also went on the court, not knowing who anybody was. And I was, I was not really, the, I, mean, I was never the most skilled basketball player. I was just super athletic all the time. And then I just picked up the ball and started dunking around. And this small, I thought it was Chinese, this small Chinese guy came up to me. And it was Sha Tangenzen, which was the head coach of him uh, okay. during that time. So he was like, who are you? And, you know, what are you doing here? You play basketball? And I was like, yeah. I just accompanied my friend. <laughs> he was like, since it was off season, he was like, hey, if you want, you can practice with us. So I was like, all right. He didn't think anything about it. <laughs> so I went to That's practice. That's the city right there, man. Like, with, uh, with Barangay Hinebra. And Green Meadows was their home court. Okay. Uh, uh, I got practice facility back then. Uh-huh, for sure. And then, so after the third day, I went back and I think it was from solar sports or something like that. I, you know, I was watching TV. So I saw this Hinebra commercial with all the players and I was like, dude, I practice with all of them. So I went out to the, <laughs> the basketball court, you know, in the subdivision. And yeah, I told yeah. everybody, yeah. Like, hey, I practice with Barangay Hinebra. And everybody was laughing at me. <laughs> 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 oh man! The ball got into. So who who were those guys? Was that like Sila Dave Nagtalon? Uh, what do you mean the Hinebra players or? No, no, the guys who in BF in Web. Oh no, no, these are just like random, you know, those people who play on. Oh, the, the guys who play all the time. Yeah, yeah I get. Because I used to live in Southland. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. the, the games in BF would be like Saturday Sundays, right? Like almost lunchtime. I think. Uh, it's just like a small basketball court where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was playing and your kids, so that's why yeah. I used to uh, spend my free time because I have nothing else to do and had no money to go around. <laughs> so, like, how long was the period for that though? Like, you transitioning from like just hanging around to you becoming part of the team. I mean, maybe you can share some of your struggles and challenges getting to that point. Well, I never got into uh, Kinebra, so I practiced with them for maybe. I don't know, maybe two weeks. And then the assistant coach, uh, Binky Fawis, during that time, he was telling me like, hey, you're only 18. You could still play college basketball. And from where I'm from, I would have never imagined that I could play college basketball. And then uh, his close friend was Coach Nash Rosella, which was the head coach in San Veda during that time. So he so brought you played in Veda. There. Yeah, I went there, just one practice. And after the first practice, all the priests came up to me because it's held by <laughs> priests, you know, Sambeda. Because I just left Sambeda. I pretty much. Yeah, just, it's like a two year, right? From NC to one year only. One year only. only. Okay. But uh, the reason why I couldn't play in the UAP is because Sambeda didn't want to give out my papers, my transcripts. Oh, damn. Oh. So huh. they were so mad. They ruined my college career. <laughs> and so that's how I started playing uh, Liga La Bas. I pretty much like sustained myself by playing basketball, like on whatever. The <laughs> but did you did you love it though? I mean, was there passion for the for the sport, or was it also sur more survival? Like, or was it both? A little I bit was of both. both. Like, yeah. yeah, it was really both. I mean, the, I was already playing one year college basketball, and uh, my dream during that time was like trying to play in the PBA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I, I kept at it and even if everything was falling apart I just I knew I could make it you know so I, I still made it to the PBA but I had a really unorthodox road towards it <laughs> unorthodox road what do you mean by unorthodox road oh well I, I quit basketball for a year and I worked in a call center because oh, uh, okay no How way come? yeah uh, I had a really bad knee injury I I tore everything in my left knee, my ACL, oh. ACL, MCL, oh, man. Menis, like really everything. Yeah. It happened during the, I was playing in the PBL and that team, they disbanded. It was Nusa, Nusa Shoes. They, they disbanded and they didn't want to pay for my rehab. So they paid for my operation, but then I, I had a lawyer and everything, but they just refused to pay for the rehab. So, and during the same, at the same time, uh, I already, I had a son. Mm -hmm. and was a newborn so I had to make ends meet and I completely like gave up basketball and started working in a call center mm -hmm. in a bank just to get by. <laughs> how, but how was that experience like from pro ball to being in a call center what was that what was the culture like like what were the challenges? 
uh, well, everything was a challenge. Well, first of all, how I got the job was also so weird. Uh, I went to for a job interview because a friend of mine told me like, hey, maybe you can just work in a call center. It's pretty easy to get in. And I really, really needed money. Yeah. So I went there with shorts and a t-shirt and <laughs> everybody there was like formally dressed like corporate attire. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'll never get this job. And then anyway, I had the first interview and uh, it went pretty well because the woman who was interviewing me, her cousin was a PBA player, Alex Kabagnat. And oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we pretty good. About, uh, <laughs> uh, basketball. And then she was like, you know what? Just come in the afternoon again for the second interview. So I went in the afternoon again and I got the job <laughs> in shorts and t-shirts. That's, <laughs> That's <crazy>. awesome. <laughs> It yeah. seems like um, there seems to be a lot of good timing in like the experiences you've had like in your life. Yeah. Do I you, mean, I don't believe in off timing. You know what I mean? Everything yeah. really isn't perfect after, timing. Every, yeah, yeah. Everything's happening. Yeah. yeah, everything, really everything. Yeah. So like, um, maybe you can like take us to like. Uh, I want to digress a bit because like, yeah, I met you in in California. Yeah. <laughs> through Gino Jose. <laughs> so okay. um we we met on we went to a camping trip in Buckhorn. That was epic. <laughs> uh, we we did like a very intense high dose um magic mushroom trip. Oh interesting. Psilocybin. <laughs> in the middle of the forest. And it was one of the most, the <laughs> it Perfect was one of the spot. most in, and and the thing is, the funny thing is me and Mike had the same birthday. No way. We have the same birthday. Mike's just older, older than me by a few years. Oh, okay. okay. We have this exact Crazy. same birthday. And I mean, come on. That trip was magical. And, uh, uh, oh, definitely. Was Mushrooms great. in the forest. Come on. Like, I never experienced, up to this day, I didn't experience anything close like to that. that. Same year. Same year. That was really like <laughs> wild. Like, I, we, I remember when... We were all coming down already. We went back into the tent and you slept outside in your sleeping bag. And the raccoons were like all over you. But you didn't move. You were just like super zen. It was so trippy. I felt like all the animals were watching us. They really were. They really were. They, really they were, were probably like, wow, look at these humans trip out. <laughs> it was yeah it was it was something else. And you, nice. you remember we I don't know if you remember this part, but like we, when we started seeing like those UFOs, I know you remember I, that people we, we and saw UFOs, yeah, crazy. Because <laughs> all of us saw it, and you remember, yeah, that yeah. It flashed yeah. at us. It was moving like all over the place, super fast. Crazy. We weren't that high anymore. We, those uh, late we came down already. Yeah, mm -hmm. we came down, and all of us saw it. Like, okay. These lights bouncing around. I'm like, what? That was crazy. Yeah, because first we saw one. And then we saw another one. And then I think we were all looking at the same one. And it like flashed to us. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, it did. That's it did, crazy. It did, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like the, when you're watching a meteor shower with someone. And then you're all seeing it together. But that, just much more wilder. Because it's like a light was put on all of you at the same time. It like it was moving in ways. It, could, it can't be an airplane. can't be a drone. No way. Yeah. It was too fast. Too fast. Yeah. It was just crazy. It's crazy. Until now, it's hard to believe it there. actually happened. Fuck, I wish I was there. I <laughs> Sometimes I share this experience with uh, others when I open up. And uh -huh. I don't know if I, uh, if I go deeper with somebody. And I don't know if they believe me or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Like, we, we actually, in uh, one of the previous... Uh, uh, conversations we had with one of the other people, uh, we were talking about the same thing of how you kind of have to get a read on the person you're talking to mm -hmm. if yeah. they're on the same wavelength. Because sometimes if it doesn't resonate with them, then they think we're crazy. Yeah. Or if we don't resonate with them, we just kind of blank out on people. Like if they're just, you know, talking shit. Yeah, I'm sure like, you. I'm sure you have that bullshit radar already by now. I mean, through your life experience for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, the process of uh, me growing and opening up and just being more aware about things. Like, went through a lot of different phases, and it's yeah. For you though, like I, I, I mean, I know your story, 
but like I don't want to like have to make you say the whole thing. But like maybe you can just r- right now, like what are the things that are that resonate the most in like your experiences in the last couple of years that you felt were really life altering moments? Maybe you can expound on that. I I don't know. I live my life very different. Like I'm uh, I'm a lot in nature. I'm 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 not in the city. I'm, mm. I, I don't know, I'm just, because I surf, and that alone already, like it, how, how, is, how do you explain that? It, it amplifies my whole being. and Yeah, for sure. You, with like, it, you feel like a lot of things. The rush. I mean, everything added, like steps towards yeah. where I'm now or where I'm going. But I think everything mm-hmm. started already when I was really young, because I went through so much stuff in which... Uh, you know, as a kid, I was, uh, I don't know how that, how that sounds, but I had a lot of suicidal thoughts as a kid mm. of how, how fucked up my, my childhood was, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I would sit on the edge of the window and just be like, if I just jump right now, everything is black and all the suffering is gone, you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, And uh, I don't know, my, my whole thinking is just, different you know like i i had this foster family because i didn't believe in god at all i was like this dude doesn't exist because if he existed why is my life like that and Mm -hmm. then i I, uh there was a stretch where i had a african-american uh foster family Mm -hmm. and they were like like born again christians like really hardcore oh man and they were like you don't have to do any chores in in the house all we want you to do is come with us every sunday to service and then I was like, man, I'll do whatever you want in the house. <laughs> you know, in the house I don't want to go to church. No indoctrination for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because <laughs> I, I didn't believe in God. But I mean, you know, God, everybody perceives him differently. Yeah, yeah. it's a different I thing. Yeah, I get Going you. to church and uh, a lot of things uh, started resonating with my life, like the messages they would uh, say. And it's, uh, you know, it's like, because I also stayed in Florida for a while, so it's all black church, you know, like, yeah. how people sing, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So when they uh, deliver the message, it's not like reading about a, uh, a script out of the Bible. It's like them really speaking about it. And uh, there was this part, it was, this also sounds maybe a bit crazy, but uh, I was with my brother, my foster brother, mm-hmm. during the day, because he was a soccer player, so we were just training. And then he was already talking to me about like, you know, giving up your life to Christ and, and all those things. And then the mom picked us up. It was on a Sunday. We drove to church. So she was talking with me exactly the same thing uh, in the car. Like, you know, how, how it changed her life and everything. Mm-hmm. And then the mass, the service started and the pastor was talking about the same thing too. So I'm like, this is. Oh so man. Cool. Yeah. That's trippy. And then, like, kind of deep inside, I was like, this, this might be the right thing to do, you know, just to see what happens. But then I was thinking about all my bad vices, and I was really bad when I was a kid. I, I couldn't, like, give up, like, a lot of things, you know. Yeah. And then at the end of the Mass, he was like, you know, if uh, there's a lot of people in here, they, they slip back or they would want to do this step, but then are afraid what friends and family think and all those things. So he was like, just bow your head. And if you feel like uh, you want to make this step and give your heart to Christ, just step in front. And then so I bowed my head. And in my head, I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to go. But something, I don't know, just brought me in front. And I stood in front and I started <laughs> crying. I don't, while crying, I was like checking myself. I'm like, I don't even know why I'm crying right now. Oh, man. And then, that's, that's real. Yeah. That's real, so I was bro. just like in my head, I was like, God, if you exist and I make this step and nothing happens, like you, you know, there is no God, but there is a higher being, whatever it means. Yeah. But if, you know, if I decide to do this now and something changes in my life, like I'll, I'll stick with it. And okay. I don't know how to explain it. It was like, this, this, this heavy weight just fell off and so many doors started opening afterwards. And that was one of the uh, first, like, wow moments which I had in my life in which it was something else out there. And yeah, yeah. How old were you then? Uh, I don't know, maybe 16, 17. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty young for like a, 
an awakening like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 they, but it happened at the right time, I guess. I mean, if it yeah. was all, yeah. all those, the sequence of events, like right before it, I mean. Yeah. I mean, like everything with everybody, like with, even with you, you know what I mean? Like if, if you look back at life, it doesn't matter uh, how bad something was. But if you look back, you see all the dots connect. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. That's why I wish, you know, there's no such thing as bad in life. There's really no such thing as bad. We perceive certain things as bad because when it happens right away, we're like, oh, why? Because it doesn't go our way. That's yeah. why we're mad or frustrated. But mm -hmm. if your mind switches right there and then, thinking into uh, your older self, being like, I'll look back at this later on and all this has to, you know, is connected to, uh, how do I explain that? It had to happen for me to be where I am then. You know exactly, I mean? exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. But like, so, how, so like now though, like, I mean, let's, I want to connect this to the whole pandemic happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, for a lot of people, it looks like a, a tragedy. Like it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. But, I don't see it that way. Like I personally see it as like this is a, a transition, an opening for like a new a new cycle to happen. You know, I like think so too. like it's gonna be super difficult, but at the same time, it's necessary for people to change. Mm -hmm. So, like with you, like um, how do you see it? How do you see this pandemic? I'm I'm right there with you. Like I totally agree. It's like it's like a shift. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Like, it's impossible to get out of this the same way you got into it, you know? Because mm. we've got so much time now and all the noise around us is, is gone. Like, you know, the pressure you have because of your job and responsibilities, this and that. Mm. There's a lot of people at home now and they realize things they've never seen before. Yeah. You know, because of all the noises around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, there's, I think there's going to be a big shift with, which is people being more aware about things so it's just yeah it should it should raise a lot of people's awareness and consciousness i hope so yeah, yeah I really, I hope that's, really, that's the hope that's the hope i'm reminded like, of uh do you, do you guys know um the the vipassana that um 10 days of noble silence yeah so like, retreat? yeah it's like a buddhist retreat and okay. i don't know for some reason like this whole lockdown sounds <laughs> like a vipassana like a no for, for humanity yeah, like no <laughs> and the interesting thing about the vipassana is that they it's it it, it translates to surgery of the mind mm -hmm. so everyone is getting surgery in their minds because like they're going through the panic through the denial uncertainty through the it's resentment uncertainty, uncertainty. Yeah. But then after this, when you're kind of like getting used to it or kind of like trying to cling for something, that's when the breakthroughs start coming. But it's going to be a bit painful first though. Yeah, I mean, every kind of breakthrough or growth is in a certain way painful because it's like letting go of what you know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Mike, like how about like how you love to surf? And mm. you, you surf, you like big waves. <laughs> So, how do you, like, what's your relationship with, like, wipeouts, you know, like, feeling fear, feeling uncertainty, whether or not you're going to take the wave or not? Like, maybe you can share that. I mean, for me, surfing is, is uh, not just, a, I don't do it because it's just, like, a sport or a hobby. It's really all I want to do because it's a, it puts me in a state in which, I don't know, like, other people take stuff to get high but i just need to be in the water because it's for me it's just so amazing to write this foreign element mm. and yeah I, I can't really explain it's just wow but I then also you, surfing is so also cool. uh i call it like it's pretty much one-to-one -one with life like you paddle to be in the right position to get the wave and it's like the same thing as struggling in life and working 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 to get into a position for to put yourself in the best spot possible for certain opportunities and surfing is i don't know 80 percent is wiping out and paddling you know <laughs> yeah. and yeah it's and when you wipe out it's 
I don't know. I just see everything one to one with life with surfing. It's the analog, the analogy with it. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I don't see, and I don't know anything else that is so similar to life. But how do you like? Uh, you know, you 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 mentioned that you kind of live off the grid now. You travel a lot. You know, like how. I'm sure a lot of people also tell you, like, why don't you just get a regular job, go back, build a career? Like, how do you respond to people like that? And what do you explain to them? I mean, I don't really explain it into the, into the depth because people who say that, they already have this structured thinking. Yeah, preconditioned. Like, oh, right. that, you know? So I just tell them, I'm, I'm just not cut for it. And yeah, because for me, there's so much more to life than doing something that you don't love you know and uh, you have the passion yeah mm. there's just no makes no sense because life is so short and fragile agree everything else is just a waste of time because for sure yeah. if it's bullshit fuck it yeah because i i really have no fears in life the only thing i which scares the shit out of me is like you know when you're old and you know you're about to leave and die yeah, yeah. And you look back at life and then you have all those regrets. Uh, you talk to yourself like, what if? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I should have like that. I'd never want to happen. So that's what makes me live the way I live right now. Meaning whatever I feel strongly for, I just go for it. I don't care if, uh, I don't care about the current circumstances, but I just go for, yeah, I just go for it. Just jump into the water and then see what happens from there. Like, so even fear doesn't get in the way. Like I, I, or you still do it. Like even though you feel it, uh, it's not really fear. It's more like I think Uncom- I discomfort I, rather than fear. I'm very comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Like I, I kind of like that being in that, in that zone of uncertainty, and I, I think I thrive in that because <laughs> yeah, mean, yeah. Some people do. Some people like really that. do. There's like. Because it, it brings out your A-game. Yeah, like when you're not in your comfort zone, there's this part in your brain which start working, which wouldn't work when you're comf- comfortable. Yeah, the fight or flight mechanism, yeah. right? Yeah. Is what they call it in psychology. You're creative and your juices yeah. start flowing. And uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's just the state I want to stay in. Because, I mean, I could have all the comfort in my in there is, but if, I don't know, everything is, I'm just really allergic against stuff which is like structured and yeah yeah oh, yeah and, we get it's the okay. worst it's yeah. the worst i can't what excites you now the most i mean you've had so many cycles of different interests like currently what, like what are you super into uh well it's uh surfing but then what i'm excited is is the lift of the lockdown so i can <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah like me in life i really don't plan anything like i i don't even see much into the tomorrow i just like going with the flow and like have everything unfolded in the way yeah yeah and be grateful along the way but for That's those that like um you know like a lot of people listening and you know like there's a lot of people that we know that have this like scarcity mindset you know they always say like, oh, you got to save money for your future. I have to do this. I have yeah, to do have this to do first that. before I take off. Like, how would you convince these people or share with them your insights about how to like not let that get to, get to you or become a hindrance to pursuing what you really want to do in life? Well, I wouldn't convince anybody of something, but what I would want to do is just like make people see that it's, like I said earlier, it's really not an accident that you feel strongly about something or somebody and that if you really go after that uh, feeling or after that passion or goal like things like that journey that path it's it's not gonna leave you into nowhere like so many amazing things will unfold of that because you're going towards something your heart is really into and And, like it's you can't go wrong I mean, at least resistance. Yeah. Like exactly. it's more like the people, the people who are fearful are, I think the people which never really been out of the comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. They're just exactly. heavily molded by society or religion, parents or whatever it might be. So Mike, what's your favorite conspiracy theory? 
Yeah, I'd love to hear the, <laughs> You got me. You got me on that when you said you like conspiracy theories. Mm, well, uh, conspiracy. Th- well, I just believe like, like especially with this coronavirus thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Like, uh, it's pretty relevant. Like, it's, there's so much more behind it, you know. So, East or West, what's your, what's your, what's your take? Who's uh, behind it? East well, like, West? long story short, I think a lot of things won't be the same like how it was before. Yeah. They definitely. will really come out with like forced vaccinations. Mm. And it's like, it's a global thing. I mean, like, there's so many other things which kill way more people daily, you know. Car crashes. Like, right. really, the, the biggest killer is yeah. car crashes. Right? Car yeah. crash, <laughs> everything. Common yeah. flus or yeah. domestic violence for that matter. Every, like, there's so many things. It, it comes down to, like, people will be chipped. Like, I totally believe in it, that people will be chipped. And, like, you, you cannot function in the society anymore if, if you don't comply with all those things. But that's, that's all, like, already written, uh, I mean, viable or whatsoever, just depending on how you, uh, how, you, uh, how, you, how you read it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, how you, you understand whatever you're reading. You're, yeah. you're, the way you accept the information, is that what you mean? Uh, like the way you, how, to you, how you perceive it? perceive it or uh yeah how, how you perceive it but everything which is happening now i think this already all there was already all foreseen by people yeah, set in motion is what you're saying uh, yeah people they were labeled like crazy or all those conspiracy theorists but yeah. so many conspiracies are coming to light now you know what i mean, I mean yeah. it's a lot of it a lot of it has come to that i mean have you seen zeitgeist uh no i heard about it oh uh, you should check that one out uh, it, there's three, but I think the first is the the, the first should be enough because the first will kind of marry the different religions and how they're all kind of parallel, like they all have uh, a savior, they all have a version of Jesus and the prophets and all that, and then like how a lot of the holidays or the the uh, we call them holidays, but the holy days of obligation, yeah. as the Catholics like to call it. Uh, coincide with let's say winter solstice or summer solstice or like uh, Easter with spring so yeah, I know I actually like for me I've been like lately I've been reading a lot about um, Philippine tribes and it's just super sad that it's been so suppressed some yeah. practically erased they tried to like, kill us all but I mean, our culture was so deep with, so, the yeah. ma- with magic, with like that's why they had culture. To, that's why they had to... That's what they did to, South, to basically North America. South America, it took them a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. With North America, I think uh, the West was able to... Uh, it, it, there were so many Native Americans that really were massacred. I mean, to make the long story short, right? And they call it Thanksgiving. I mean, in the end, it's all religion, really, which why yeah, pretty much things out. Yeah, pretty like, agree. It's crazy. I mean, I was in Peru uh, not too long ago for like three wow. months. Wow. Yeah. Tell us about that. I, it was crazy. I mean, we, we, it was a surf trip, and we also wanted to go into the deep Amazon to, make a, to have this whole ayahuasca ceremony. Not just wow. going to a place and having the brew, as in really in like the weeks leading up. The ceremony, yeah. The yeah. ceremony. And yeah, it's like the Incas and all of that stuff. It's just so interesting. But like same like uh, Nick said about the Filipino culture, which was so rich and magical and all those things. But we don't mm-hmm. really know about it. Same over there. You know what I mean? It's also press because because the Catholics came in and for sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like calling countries like the Philippines and South America and a lot of countries in Africa third world countries. The term I like to use is uh, former colonies. For of uh, the West, true uh, that were exploited for their resources. Mm-hmm. I mean, just pretty true. much, yeah, right. Spices, sugar, all these different things. No, I really, I really wonder. You know, like that's a thing that kind of gets me when I don't, when I start thinking about this whole situation with the pandemic, and um, you know, like resources are becoming more uh, scarce, but at the same time. I just 
I mean, I can imagine a certain number of people being able to transition well into, let's say, growing their own food, you know, maybe be able to be self-sustainable. But I mean, for majority of other people, man, I'm scared for them. Because yeah. like, well, it's that, gonna be a rude that, fucking awakening for yeah. them. I'll tell you that much. It's this not going. This shit's not going back to normal. Sorry, I swear a lot, Mike. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I swear in the podcast, like uh, we told <laughs> the other guys that as well. We were like, no, you say whatever you want. You say what? It's a it's a flow thing. Like what you feel mm-hmm. you need to share at this specific moment or any yeah. moment later, just throw it out there. Yeah. But but Mike, what do you want to see though? Like, what's your idea of like uh, the neck, the new Earth? What does the new Earth look like to you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I don't you think that... everyone surfing. You don't want to think about tomorrow. <laughs> no. You want to think about the present. You are in the present. Yeah. yeah. Living yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> That's the best though. Like that freedom is priceless. Yeah. I mean, to me, freedom is everything. You know, I'm, I, I just can't be, I don't know, squeezed into a, I can't be squeezed into something I, in which doesn't allow me to unfold into who I really am and how I want to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how, how do you see this lockdown as like, it's been a month Yeah, lockdown and I'm sure that makes you feel very, you know, like antsy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm I, fortunate to be in a place in which um, uh, I still have kind of freedom to be out in nature. Okay. But it's, yeah, it's making me nuts not being in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but at the same time, properties of the ocean. Yeah, because that's really where I'm. I feel most like home, and then I mean, even for me, like I'm mean, for you guys, I'm sure as well. Uh, this lockdown, like, also made me realize a lot of things. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, like me, for example, I just know that I can't be away from the ocean, and uh, I've been thinking about certain things for the longest time already, and kind of daydreaming about things but i just know what i have to do after this lockdown and just make certain things happen and mm-hmm. you know how to manifest it already you got yeah. you got to unlock pretty much right i will come out this lockdown like a rocket shoot nice. <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the fuck out there and start you know where are you plan to go though uh it's not more going it's, it's more like having because having okay i don't really have a home home and you know but i mean to surf like what what's your what's your go-to spot over here Ah, Pagutput. Really? Yeah, it's like... But it's, it, does it, it gets choppy, though. No, Pagutput is the hands-down best surf in the surf. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, where do you stay? Because King, Kingfisher is the kite surfing resort. Yeah, it's all windy over there. But there's That's, Oh, so you don't stay by the tip. You stay towards the, la- towards the west. Uh, the other side. Yeah, towards the west. South. But since it's on the tip, like they surf all the way around Southwell. And North Holy well. shit! We got There's so many. Can you take us with you. Yeah, just come. Yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah! It's been a while. It's been where a while. I wanna, where I wanna have something, yeah, like nice. uh, you pretty much have a home base. Yeah. But that's I. I had no idea. I I've gone there quite a number of times because um, uh, just to give you a bit of a background of what I do, I uh, yeah. as weird as this may sound, given what we've been talking about over the past few minutes, uh. I reintegrated into the system and Nikki knows this very well. And the only reason I did it is because I have this passion for uh, renewable energy. Okay. I lived, I lived in Mindanao, Western Mindanao. So that's like a, a little bit of a critical area in the Philippines where the, there's a lot of uh, civil unrest, uh, a lot of warlords still until now. So, uh, living there, experiencing brownouts every day for hours at a time. I was just like, no, nah, this shouldn't be happening. It's, it, it, we're way past the year 2000. And like, I mean, you go to other countries, they got solar all over and they're not even in the right spot on the planet for it. Mm-hmm. And we're right, we're, we're right smack in the sweet spot. where so into solar energy. Yes, uh, I uh, help build solar farms and wind farms. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's the only like, reason why I reintegrated back into the system. Can have you, you started your own thing or you work for a company? I work for a company. So basically, I work for the guy who built the first solar farm in the Philippines. Was and it Puskowitz? 
No, Buskovic is rooftop. Uh, I know okay. Buskovic as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Buskovic is rooftop and he focuses more on commercial and residential. Mm, so okay. we do utility scale. Like the farms that you would see in uh, like the US and China. Oh, that's big. Yeah. It's, it's fun, man. I mean, yeah. not going to lie. I, I really enjoy it. I used to work in off-grid solar. So I started working doing uh, uh, like solar home systems for the rural poor. And then eventually I got picked up by that group that does utility scale farms to help uh, deal with external affairs. So having to talk to the community, having to talk to, of course, the local government, which is really bullshit. Why is it, why is it bullshit though? Let, let it's people... bullshit because everyone <laughs> wants a fucking cut. And the <laughs> worst part is that it's so normal that when they talk to you, they think that that's, you're about that. That's why you're there. So that's why I we had don't to, progress. Yeah, I had to create a system where we don't pay you guys. Uh, it's more of like, a, here is a circular from the Department of Energy that says that your local government gets a percentage of the profits. And it's up to you what you want to do with that but you have to have a program. It can't just be you draw from that and spend it on whatever the fuck you want. The program has to be aligned with what the Department of Energy or the Department of Agriculture has planned for the area. You create positive change for communities and for the country. I think so. I think it, I think, because what happens is you create, uh, uh, you create cheaper access to electricity. Mm -hmm. And you're not relaxed because we're, I'm sure you're aware, we're a fossil fuel based country, right? So primarily we are powered by coal and bunker diesel. Okay. So that's, that's the worst kind. Bunker is the worst, right? Because that's what the, they used to use for the old ships. They don't use that anymore on the bigger ships. But uh, so the old engines were put in different islands in the Philippines. And that's what powers the communities. Okay. That's why it's always brown out. That's why it's always... Well, Pagudpud is lucky because uh, the two wind farms there... Well, the one in Pagudpud specifically is... Uh, I work for that company. Well, okay. our company owns that company. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also the one in by the beach, uh, Bangi, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Bangi Beach. Yeah. The uh, same project. Yeah, same, same project owner. So that, know that's, why I, that's why I didn't know there was surf. Uh, every time I'd be in Kingfish and be like, man, man this guy kite surfing is getting all the fun. Here I am just sitting by the beach. and like, Not at all. That's why I'm there because people don't know. <laughs> Dude, you got to take us there, man. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> like, really, I think in the whole Philippines, that's one of the only places where you can surf just with your friends and there's nobody else in there. And that's it's awesome epic it's really epic like i had my best surf was in pagutput like it's, it's just epic <laughs> dude as soon as this lockdown is done oh wait <laughs> let's use my pass nikki we'll go to pagutput <laughs> are you planning to go back to pro i've been seeing some like banter about that uh, really I, I had like offers of For offers right the <laughs> mppl uh marikina Muntindu. well Anyway, four teams, but I don't know, like, I don't know. I mean, there, like last week, you know, a couple of weeks ago, like, because I've been working out a lot, because uh, I joined the Senshi Tuna Superbots, I'm, and I'm in the finals. Congrats, oh, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, so, good luck, man. I hope you fucking win it. You're going to win that. You're going to win Dude, that. that's going to be epic. <laughs> I mean, that experience alone is just really awesome, but I've been working out really a lot because of that, and then... Uh, uh -huh. I was like, man, I could just jump in again and play again. Like, that's how I Yeah, do. you're fit <laughs> enough for that for sure, man. Yeah. But, dude, I mean, you're in the best place possible. Tito Marco has all the equipment you need. And, yeah. <laughs> right? So Their just, gym is sick. <laughs> yeah. I'm really fortunate. Nice. I'll be working nice. out. Nice, yeah. nice. Hey, man. Like, I re we really appreciate you joining us, even in spite of this whole lockdown. Yeah, oh, and the rescheduling and everything. Yeah. Man. That's on me. That's on me. No, it's okay. It's so fun to talk with 
people from the outside. <laughs> no, man, this is, it's, it's yeah. nice to hear someone from the same tribe. Yeah, yeah man, like it's, it's, I feel you. it's great. It's fucking great. Like it's a vibe. 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 But it yeah, doesn't Mike, flow, it doesn't flow. Exactly, exactly. But thanks so much, man. Oh, thank Hopefully, you. Guys. Thank you're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. We all connect after the definitely matches online. Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Do, let's, let's, let's do a surf trip to Pagod Pud. Hey, can yeah. happen. You don't have to worry about like accommodation. Just come up. Uh, cool, man. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Let's do it. Let's mm-hmm. do it. Well, thanks, Mike. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Thank this you. is great. This is fun. We should do this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. I'll see you, Mike. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night, Mike. Hey, giving as my best. I will. Our snap says hi. I will. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Bye, see brother. You, Peace. See you.